Oh, man, isn't that good? I just had to show that to you, to you guys. Oh, okay, let me get out of that. You know, he said something, though. He said, you know, what is it about the human condition that we always want to be on top, that we always want to be above? Well, it's that me on the inside, and we know that selfishness is a byproduct of sin, and that's why Jesus said, hey, if you want to be on top, if you really want to be on top, you need to be the least. You need to be a servant of all. For the, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we understand that once we come into the kingdom of God, we understand that it's not about us. And the Bible begins to teach us that, in fact, even our stuff, the things that we own, it's not really ours. Psalm 20, in the book of Psalms, it tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It means all of our stuff, all of our boats, all of our things that we have, they all belong to God. They're not truly ours. And then Jesus really brought this on a practical level in the New Testament when he began to teach us, you know, like the parable of the vineyard, the parable of the talents, all these types of things that look, not only is our stuff not our stuff, it's really, we're not owners. God is the owner, that we are the stewards, that we are the managers and that one day we'll give an account for how we use the stuff that God has put into our care. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. One day we will stand before Jesus and he'll want an account for what we did with his stuff. And, G and Peter is going to learn a great, great lesson in this, in Luke chapter 5. He's going to learn how to trust God with his stuff. Jesus comes to Peter. He says, Peter, I need your boat. Now, now remember... What does Peter's boat represent? He's not just a you know, recreational fisherman. This is Peter's livelihood. This is his business. This boat right here, it represents his energy, his money, his time, his talent. It represents everything. And so Jesus comes and asks Peter for his boat. Peter, can I use your boat? Peter says, all right. And they, they push off from the shore. And it starts this process in Peter that we're going to go through where Peter learns that, hey, God having my stuff, me being a giver, God having my money, it's not just about the money, it's about my relationship with Jesus. So this is my point today, and this is what my prayer is for all of us. It's very simple, that we would trust God with our stuff. Trust God with your stuff. Trust him with your money. Trust him with your possessions. You've got to trust God with your stuff. And for Peter, like for most of us, it's a process here. So here's what Peter does. I mean, Jesus gets in his boat, and, and I want you to think about this. Jesus gets in his boat. They launch out from shore, okay? But then Jesus kind of takes it up a notch, and he says, okay, Peter, here's the deal. You've let me use your boat. Now I want you to take this to another level. Now I'm going to take you through a process where you really have to trust me with your stuff. He says, what I want you to do, and he's about to give Peter a promise here. He says, I want you to launch out into the deep for a catch. Okay, in other words, we know that catch, that's not just fish, that represents cash for Peter. He says, Peter, I want you to launch out in the deep. And Peter, what all of us do Immediately, remember what that boat represents, his money, his time, his energy, everything. Peter comes up with the excuses of why he shouldn't do that, possibly why he can't do that. Lord, we've been toiling all night. In other words, God, in other words, God, I mean, I've already let you use my boat this morning. It's already cost me money. We're already more tired. Listen to me. Peter, you can sense right here what kind of a businessman he is. Peter is all about the business. He's all about the money. He's been driving his employees all night. There hadn't been a break. You know what I'm saying? No, he's been driving. He's like, man, we've been working all night. We hadn't caught nothing. I mean, I'm sure he's thinking, okay, Lord, you're saying go out to the deep. Remember, these boats didn't have any motors back then. Who knows how long it's going to take to get out to the deep? Now, Lord, you're telling me, okay, I'm going to lose more time. I'm going to lose more money. And by the time we get out to the deep, if this, doesn't tap, if this doesn't happen, I mean, I'm toast. Because we're going to be too exhausted. We're not going to be able to fish all night. We need to go to another place. I know there's no fish over there. He's coming up with all the reasons initially as to what a step of faith this is going to be to him and what would happen if this doesn't work. But Peter makes a very important confession. 
And it says it just like this in the New King James Version. He says, nevertheless, at your word, I will go. And each and every one of us, at some point in our lives, when it comes to money, we're going to have to make the nevertheless statement to God. We're going to have to step out in faith. God, you're telling me to, 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 to trust you with my money, to trust you with my energy, to trust you with all this. Lord, don't you know how I've been tolling? Don't you know all these bills I have to pay? Don't you know how these creditors, don't you know why didn't, you, why didn't this thing come through? See, here's what we want to do. We want God to fill our boats with fish before we trust Jesus with our stuff. But it doesn't work that way. Jesus is about to fill Peter's boat with fish, but Peter first has to learn to trust God. See, here's the deal. When Peter gave God his boat, God returned the boat full of fish. But what we want to do, we want God to fill our boats with fish before we ever allow Jesus one foot in that thing, and it doesn't work that way. I know what some of you are saying right now. You're saying, well, well Stovall, you know, I mean, I've been trusting God with my stuff, and I I just, I haven't seen that blessing come in yet. Listen, you're just still on your way out to the deep. Who knows how long it it took Peter and them to get out? Can you imagine, wouldn't you love to be around Peter while they're going, you know what I'm saying? And Peter's like, all right, are we deep enough? Looking at his watch, well, they didn't have watches, looking at his sundial, whatever he's doing. (laughs) Come on, we know Peter. We know how Peter ends up cussing, cutting off people's ears. You know what I'm saying? Rebuking Jesus, all this. You know what kind of, do you see the me monster? It's in there with me. This costing me time. This costs me money. I'm a businessman. Can you imagine just going out in the deep and just, it, just Peter thinking, Jesus, you better come through. <laughs> just going out there. See, some of you right now, you're wondering, man, well, why hadn't my blessing come in? I'm just telling you, you're still on your way out to the deep. You're still in the process. And I'm telling you, if you give Jesus your boat, eventually you'll be in the deep. And there's a harvest. There's a catch of fish coming in. There's a blessing coming in that's going to blow your mind. Don't look at just the right now. Look at the journey where Jesus is taking you. Thank God Peter gave Jesus his boat because Jesus returned it full of fish. That's like a boat full of cash. To Peter and these guys. Listen, whatever you give to Jesus, he returns it full. I could take you all through the Bible and tell you every time people gave Jesus their stuff, he always returned that full. God will be a debtor to no man. He will owe no man nothing. At the judgment seat of Christ, all you're going to see is every dollar, everything that you gave to God. God multiplied it back so many times over. Don't give up going out to the deep if you hadn't seen the blessing yet because you're going to get there. And Jesus promised Peter, he said, let's go out there and I'm going to give you the biggest catch you've ever seen. Come on, give God a hand for that. So I just want to give you three simple things about trusting God with your money and trusting God with your stuff. First of all, just remember God's promise. God's promise to Peter. He says, look, Peter, you've given me your boat. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to, faithful, how I'm going to come through for you. We're going to go up to the deep. You're going to get a catch. When Peter said, remember, he gave his excuses like we all have. Come on, how many of you have excuses why not to give God your money? I know I do. We all have our excuses. We're we're all the me monsters, like Peter was. But eventually, you've got to get beyond your feelings. And you've got to understand, you've got to come in and and you've got to say, you know, nevertheless, Lord, at your word, I'm going to do this. And I believe you're going to come through. And here's why. Watch this. God is a God of order. God must be first. He cannot be second. When order is restored, Blessing is released. The reason that so many of you have not seen God's financial blessing or even overall blessings in your life for that matter is because your life is out of order. God is not first. And when it comes to money, really, to be honest, money's before God. And you're going to have to come to the point like Peter did. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, he said, listen, you cannot serve God in money. 
You can only have one master. Who's going to be first? If money is first, you, your needs, your bills, your stuff, me, 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 global interest, ah, 